Off the press bar! We welcome you all to Hunter and Central Television. It's boys playoff action. The Hunter and Central Red Devils are taking on Irvington at the Fieldhouse. I'm here with Coach Defazio. Coach, first playoff game in three years. It's very exciting for you and the team. What's the overall feel like for the chemistry and the team overall? Um, you know, we're looking to bounce back after a rough stretch, but, you know, we've proven this year that we can play some really good basketball. So, you know, we're going to try and do that tonight. You know, obviously last game, Matthew Schwartz scoring a 1,000 points against Pingree. Now, you know, I'm sure he's very excited. Now, going into this game, how big is a player like Matthew Schwartz for an environment like this? Um, I mean, he's our alpha dog. So, you know, we're, we're going to need him tonight, but we're going to need all the guys tonight. Okay? Um, you know, playoff basketball is not a one-man game. You know, we're going to need all five guys and the guys that come off the bench to play Really good team defense, really good team offense, and um, you know have a collective team effort. All right, Coach, I wish you good luck tonight. We're going to send it off to Tyler Rodriguez and Logan Williamson for the game. Thank you, Brad, for that interview with Foz and for introducing us and welcoming us, Brad, who did the girls' game for us. Luckily, the girls won there. Now I'm joined with Logan Williamson here, live from the field house for like what Brad was saying, NJSIA tournament, first round, North Jersey, section two, group four. So for you, Logan, I know that's probably very confusing for you when I say those words, so I'll explain it to you like this. Thank you, Tyler. Of course. Central is in the section two, group four, for, of course, New Jersey being a big school, we're group four, and we're in the north bracket. There's two sections of the north, we're in section two, and we are the sixth seed. So if we win, it's uh, 16 teams. We win four games. I believe, yep, 16 teams win four games. We win the section, and if we win that, then we can compete to win the group, the whole group four, and become the state champion. So this is what people say is a state game, but really this is the first game to win the sectional championship here for the Red Devils. Like we said, the sixth seed against Irvington and Logan. Hunter Central has not played in any sort of state sectional game, whatever you want to call it, since the 2021-2022 season against Franklin when Franklin was the fourth seed. Central was the 13th seed. They lost badly that day, 73-46. That was on 2022, February 28th. And funny enough, for Irvington, their last state game, or playoff game rather, was also against Franklin exactly a year ago today. They lost 72-65. to Franklin was the seventh seed and Irvington was the tenth seed that day. So the central, this is normally kind of just uh, really an accept expectation. They're in this tournament competing, but haven't been here in a while, Logan, so you can imagine for them, this is a big game for a couple. Think about some of these older players who haven't gotten to play in big playoff games like this. Oh uh, yeah, so what you're saying, Tyler, is this is a pretty important game. Exactly, Logan, I know you're more of a simple guy, but yep, that's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying here for the Red Devils who have struggled, no no question about it, struggled in the last three, lost three in a row. They're four, three and four in the month of February, had a good month in January, so they're hoping to catch form here right at the right time, lost to Pingree on Monday. Matt Schwartz reached 1,000 points that day, a big milestone for him, but for the Red Devils as a team, things just not going as they would want here on the court, you know, with with how they're playing, how they're gelling, the rotation and everything. So we'll see what can happen tonight. They can try to turn it around. It's fundamental coming off that that loss against Pingree and the big 101 Sussex loss against Vernon that really hurt them. Now we'll take a bit of a break here for National Anthems. Thank you. 
So back now here for introductions from each team from the starting lineups here. As we'll start with the Irvington Blue Knights. Number zero, Jaden Pearson leads the team in scoring 12.4 points per game, 6.17 rebounds per game, 2.83 assists per game for the senior. Keon Sampson, number four, the senior as well out there for them. Sheck Sharif, the very talented, another senior out there for them as well. 5.6 points per game. Jaden Bermudez, the sophomore has 167 points in the season. Season comes up to 7.26 average. And number one, Jasmine Taylor, the other sophomore in the starting lineup, 261 points per game, 11.3 points per game. That's to say, excuse me, 261 on the season for him. A talented scorer for them as just a sophomore. So we have some very capable scorers on this roster. If you look at the Red Devils, it's really only three main guys for them that are going to score the basketball. In the first year is Landon Marsh, their sharp shooter, showed very good development, putting the ball on the floor and getting inside as well. Cameron Diogene emerged as a point guard and also has an eye to get inside, get some points for himself as well. Weston Shirk scored 30 points in the loss against Phillipsburg, had four the other night against Pingree, excuse me, Hayden Landy, just a Player, very reliable player, one that follows, likes, plays good defense, brings great energy. And as we said, Matthew Schwartz, number four, the main threat out there, has the 1,000 points now, Logan, a big weight off his chest, and we'll see what we see from him today. He's had some really good performance, and by his high standards, some not so good ones in the last three games, especially looking against Phillips Bergwin. Struggled defensively against Skirbo Jr., but still put up the 12 points. Had an amazing night last night, scoring 35. So he's that type of player where he's always going to give you great scoring. I mean, he averages 17 points per game, but whatever else he does, you know, sometimes it is hard to judge. But having a, a consistent scorer like him and the experience he brings is huge for this team, Logan. Definitely, Tyler. And you can just see the energy that the Devils have tonight. Yeah, but the crowd as well there. Supporting in big numbers all with their jerseys on here. Various professional teams. Logan's a big Giants fan. No, no, I'm not. Patriots, huh? And I knew that. I knew that. I seen how, how would you react there. You remember my team, yeah, Logan? Uh, what is it, the Steelers? Yes, sir. Black and yellow on top. And with that, it will be Keon Sampson, the senior, 6'3" against Weston Shirk, 6'5", he's listed as. Samson looks a bit tall, I'll tell you that. Looks scary with those meaty thighs there, but let's see yeah, who definitely. wins this jump ball here. Who's your money on here, Logan? Uh, I'd say definitely us. And we won it there is Cameron Diogene to start things off for the Red Devils here. Finds Landy, here's Schwartz inside it's Shirk. He's gonna have a tough matchup there against Samson, you feel. He'll try to spin. He's just strength to get inside. He's such a skilled player, Shirk. Has so many different ways he can score the basketball. Here's Diogene, excuse me. Diogene now leaves it for Marsh. It's Pearson with good defense, and they're able to turn it over in its other way. Schwartz tried to block it there, but instead it's Bermudez there with the easy bucket there, as that was Marsh who turned it over there. And just like that, the Red Devils trail very early on. Here's Landy. Oh, and another turnover, not what the Red Devils were hoping for. And again, it's another easy layup there for Sheikh Sharif there, Logan. And Sheikh Sharif is going to be guarding Cameron Diogene. Normally goes up against very athletic, long, strong defenders. And again, and another one tonight with Sharif. Here's Diogene. Shirk. Marsh. And another turnover, not what the Red Devils are hoping for. Bermudez pushes it up in front. And DeFazio, an early timeout, not to start the Red Devils are hoping for as they waited two years for this game. And it's an easy layup there for Keon Sampson as the Red Devils trail. Three buckets here, six here. It's just the pressure from this Irvington team here. You can tell came a long way, brought their two leading squad, have the energy here. And you can really see it out there on the court. 
Yeah, you know, Tyler, it's a rough start, but I don't think it's over yet. Oh, certainly, Logan. It's 6.37 in the first quarter. Yeah. It's not over. Yeah, Definitely not over. <laughs> Logan, of course, always brings the high-level analysis here. Thank you, Tyler. I try my best. Well, we can tell. <laughs> and notice they move the water a bit to the right, which is good because Molyneux is so lengthy. He's oh, yeah. always blocking my view. <laughs> he can't help it, Tyler. Oh, he just can't, can't, you know, grow less or shrink, I should say, rather. So just like that, an early sub, Grimbaum in immediately for Landon Marsh. Type of games you can't take any risks on. Let's see if, how Grimbaum does. Didn't play a whole lot the other night as it was senior out against Pingree. Shirk now gives it off for Diogen, guarded by Sharif. He'll go to the right, here's Landy. Oh, almost another turnover is Diogene. It's a tight man indeed as Blue Knights team is playing here. Here's Schwartz. Diogene inside. Ooh, had to do well there to evade the, the block there. Ooh, they call it travel. Thought they were going to call a foul there, but it's a travel instead. Yeah, I don't it know about on these refs, Tyler. Bermudez there. Yeah, it looked definitely questionable there, but... They call the trap. Oh, now they're going to reverse it here. Instead, they'll say it's a foul on Cameron Diogene. Here's Bermudez. There's Jasmine Taylor. Now here's Jaden Pearson. Sharif back for Pearson. Here's Taylor again. Red Devils look like they're in some sort of a 3 2. Yeah, definitely 3 2 there. If everything can shoot, this will be a big issue for them if they start knocking down that long ball there. Red Devils have to come out of this shell they're in here in their zone. Here's Pearson. Good move there, and there's a shot. It's no good there. Landy may have gone a piece there. It was Taylor there who went to the baseline. Now here's Grimbaum for the Red Devils. There's Schwartz for three. No good. Shirt couldn't get the rebound. It said Sampson. And he'll give it there to Bermudez who can push it up the court for the Blue Knights. He gets inside. Kicks it out. Here's Taylor. Will pump fake the three inside. And a good strong take from him. And he'll get, get himself a trip to the free throw line. Weston Shirk will pick up his first personal. See Taylor so active when he catches the ball will look either to pump fake or shoot, but he's always looking to drive, looking to make something happen there. That time a pump fake drives there and does well to, to not, you know, not get scared of the contact there. Goes into the contact, does well to evade it with his hands, get the shot up again, so up to the line. That time missed the first one. Ooh, just about gets the roll there for Jasmine Taylor. There's Landy. Diogene back for Landy. There's Cameron Diogene again. Guarded by Sharif. See the ref count in the five seconds there. Ooh, good back door from Matthew Schwartz there and gets the easy layup there. And the Red Devils are on the board here. And that's one way to beat the pressure there, Logan. You see him go in a bit hard, try to jump the pass, just go back door there, and a good bucket there for the Red Devils. Pearson, now for Taylor. Back for Pearson. Sharif. Good active hands there from, from Schwartz, excuse me. It's about to say DeFazio there. Looks like he's playing defense for the Red Devils, directing his team around there. And got to be happy with how he's defending here at the moment, covering all passing angles. Another good pump fake there from Taylor. He'll get himself inside and again gets it to go there. Jasmir Taylor has been not shy at attacking Weston Shirk and getting inside the paint there. And that time he'll get the foul to go. He'll get the shot and the foul. He's getting another trip to the line here. And he'll bring out Cameron Diogene. So some ruthlessness in the subs here from Coach DeFazio there. And 
Cameron Diogeno also going to talk him to here, see if he try to organize some things here. Probably that's a defensive error there, letting him come inside. You got to, you know, if you're playing that zone there, Logan, as you know from your days, you got you to, of course, not let them penetrate the inside because once they do that, I mean, that's the whole point of the zone, to force them to shoot in. There's Schwartz there turning it over. And this is a bit of an issue here for the Red Devils. Who's going to control the ball with Cameron Diogene out? No, Ethan Diogene out there. We've seen Schwartz not really be a primary ball handler. <coughs> Excuse me. Gets a turnover there. Now they'll be quick to bring him back in. Here's Diogene. Shirk. There's Schwartz. Shirk can certainly hit the three ball, and that time he gets it to go there. Weston Shirk for the Red Devils. The lead is now four for the Blue Knights. Here's Pearson. The top of the point here. A good pass inside for Bermudez. He'll take the mid-range high arc on that one. There's Taylor who got up high for the rebound, but hit off of the window and then the rim. Here's Shirk again. This time pump fakes, it goes inside him. Samson will spin. Here's Diogene. Marsh. Crossover inside. Ooh, tried to pass there to land. He hit the rim there. Here's Samson now coming the other way. Strong take there. Oh, no good. That time Pearson. And a big rebound there from Weston Shirk there. And it's the other way for the Red Devils. Here's Diogene inside. Oh, good pass. Oh, it's a bit high there and fast for Hayden Landy. It'll be marching. Grandbound here coming in for quick shifts. And now it's marched back out. I can wonder what DeFazio is saying to him now, Logan. Oh, uh, yeah. Jaden Pearson, Bermudez. But Sharif there in the center. Here is Pearson. Jasmine Taylor back for Pearson. Sharif. Taylor again. Haven't seen this Blue Knights team take any outside shots. It's a good pass that time. Here's an opportunity for one, and that goes, and it's through there for Jasmine Taylor, who's on fire here at the moment. Got six. And he's missed the two free throws too, and that puts the Blue Knights up by seven. Here's Shirk for Landy. Schwartz, Landy. They'll give him it, he'll take it, and it's good there from Hayden Landy. And as we've said it all year, he has the ability to hit the long ball, but just doesn't often get the green light from, from his teammates and his coaches alike. But of course, maybe they should give it to him a bit more there, Logan, if he keeps knocking him down like that, huh? Absolutely, Tyler. <laughs> Pearson now will give it in the corner for Sharif. Taylor. Pearson. And a good, that's a tough bucket there from Sharif there. It's nothing to do. Crosses over that quickly and able to elevate and hit that there. It's not bad defense that time. Maybe could have closed him down a bit more. A strong bucket there from Sharif who now has four. Good stop and go there. Action from Cameron Diogene gets inside. Likes that turnaround. It's Shirk who finds himself all alone. It was Samson that came to help there, and Shirk now has five. Diogene with his second assist of the night. The third, I should say, excuse me. Under a minute to play here. It's been a very quick first quarter here. Pearson gives it for Sharif, gets it back. Sharif, he'll pull the three, and that one's good. Not taking many threes, Logan, but they hit them both here. And Sharif now has seven. And the lead now is seven for the Blue Knights. And he's doing it on both ends here, guarding Cameron Diogene and making it happen on the other end. Oh, Shirk for the answer. No good. Good rebound by Hayden Landy. Shirk's there and will throw it up and get the foul there. Crowd is really loud tonight, Tyler. Very loud and lots of numbers as well for them. Love to see it here. And they'll need every bit of energy they can get here. A huge playoff game, as we said. A chance for Shirk here. Already has more points than he did in all of the last game. Had four last game. So Shirk will go to the line for a pair. And 
No good on the first one there for Weston Shirk. Now I need some combination conversation with Fazio there. And second one is good, so Shirk splits the pair there. And now the Bruno T for hold for last shot here. And we'll give it to Jaden Pearson. Bermuda is now. That's 12 seconds. Goes behind the back, gets inside, spins, puts it up. And it'll be four seconds here. The Red Devils try to get a shot. Ooh, they give it away to three in the corner, and it's good. A huge momentum shift there for Jaden Pearson. Right at the end, turns defense into offense for a triple there for the Blue Knights, and we'll send it down to Brad Courtside. Thank you, Tyler. You know, it was a very dominant performance for Irvington in that first quarter on both sides of the ball. They looked very good on offense and defense, specifically defense allowing turnovers, and it looked like Central was out of it. However, Weston Shirk really helped Central come back into it, making great three-point shots and getting great cuts to the rim. It's still anybody's game, a great three-point shot from Irvington to make that first quarter and seal it. Irvington comes out strong, Central, something needs to spark for them to get them back to this game. Back to you, Tyler. Yeah, thank you, Brad, there for that. And he's definitely right there, you know. Probably Irvington done their scouting work and can see you know, the real ball handler on this team is Cameron Diogene. And if they can put their best defender, who they believe is Sharif, on him and just force him to, to, to press him, force him to turn the ball over, not make things comfortable for him, it makes things very easy because Schwartz is not the type of player that's going to dribble the ball. Logan's going to be catching shoes, going to cut to the rim. And that's how he scored most of his 1,000 points there. He's going to use his length inside. And same thing with Marsh. He's a catch-and-shoot guy. Shirk operates from the paint in, in pick-and-roll scenarios when he can catch-and-shoot and shoot over people. But it's the regime that, that a lot of the offense will go through. And it's been Irvington that's been able to kind of take him out of the game. So see what Defazio does. Does he sub in another ball handler and Ethan Diogene? You know, does he just try to give Schwartz a bigger role? Not sure it's certainly something he's going to have to try to do because if they keep playing the tough defense that is Irvington here against Cameron Diaz, it's going to be hard for the Red Devils to get quality looks and, and advance the ball going forward here. And and when also Irvington continues to turn that defense and offense, Logan, it's going to be a tough uphill battle here for them. Make some good points, Tyler. So here's Pearson. Lofty pass out to Taylor. Pearson, good jab that time. And Sharif, back from Taylor. Such, you know, so electric. Oh, there's a three again from the corner. That time no good, and another offensive rebound. And Sharif will put it up, the little floater's no good. And it's Bermudez with the rebound this time, and it'll pass that one all the way out of there for Pearson. It's Taylor. Sharif, he'll pull the three, oh, that's way off that time. And again, they get the rebound. Sampson turns, try to shovel pass it there, and it's Schwartz who could come away with the steal that time. But it's so funny, you know, the contrast where Irvington can be so tough and, and electric on defense, but then when it comes to offense, they're so patient and they really choose their shots well. Theogene. Now pass out of the double there is Grimbaum for the three. That's no good. And a rebound there by Bermudez. Good look that time for the Red Devils. Here's Pearson. Sharif will take the mid-range, and he's really been so good from the mid-range so far today. Shaq Sharif there with his ninth point of the game. Grimbaum will just have to get this one away. Finds Shirk. Here's Diogene. The lead is now 11. Double what the Red Devils have. Here's Schwartz. Shirk. Schwartz again. Will go left and spin. Goes back. And yeah, probably tip there. I don't know if the Fazio is mad there at the referees or his, his team probably dribbling the ball into a corner. If it, he is, then that certainly has a case there. And now we'll bring out Grimbaum back from Marshall. It's really been the same seven players. Let's see if they're trying to change it up, bring someone else into the fold here. Some new lights and new energy, but right now he's sticking to what he's been trusting. And 
It's not quite paying off him at the moment. Here's D.O.G. And one for him. Tough bucket there from D.O.G. And he certainly will not be the problem. He's the solution for the Red Devils. That's tough for him. That's what they need him to do, Logan. Not just control the ball, but get some points on the board, especially when they play that tight, tough defense on Matthew Schwartz. You can see Irvington and their, their head coach, Elias Brantley, have done their scouting work on D.O.G. They've done it on Schwartz. They're not giving them an inch here. So they need someone else to step up. So Coach Fazio said, it's not going to be a one-man show here. They need everyone here. They need Diogene to chip in. They need Landy to hit that three and keep doing it like he did. They need Marsh to get going here and Shirk to continue to be hot here. And maybe whoever they got off the bench, like we said, Logan said, is got some talent on that bench, you know. That's true. And you can even see, like, the teamwork just being, like, used since the, uh, the beginning of this quarter. <laughs> a lot better than the last quarter. Oh, some layup there from Pearson. Sampson able to clean things up. He's got four points now for them, and it's just bully ball here sometimes for, for the Irving, for Irvington. You know, they see the zone there, don't care. They'll go straight through it. And the Red Devils just defensively have not looked as sharp as they normally do here. Here's Landy. They just can't let them to get inside and penetrate that zone, Logan. Mm -hmm. Diogene. He'll go, he'll spin, he loves that turnaround. And he always hits it, Logan. And that is so pure when he does that turnaround. It seems like his signature shot. It probably. is his signature. Seen him hit that so many times. It's just so, just so pure the way he does it. You just see it rattle down the back of the iron there. Oh, it's beautiful. Bermudez, he'll go. Here's Pearson, again, active on the catch there. Good pass for Sampson inside. He looked to draw the foul there, fell. Here's Diogene, now he's trapped here. Now it'll be Pearson just to guard him, gets a screen. Diogene still goes inside. Oh, nice Euro and a tough bucket from Diogene. He's got the last six for the Red Devils. And there's a foul there to kind of take momentum away there, see who it's on. There will be Sharif to take a visit to the line. Tatum Landy with his second foul. But that's what they need from D.O.G. in there. Need him to get going there. And he's had such a tough two years here for the Red Devils. You know, he was sick, didn't play a lot the last year, but he's put his faith in, and really his, his belief in God. He's wrote it on his shoes. He's believed that God has a great plan for him here. And he's put him in the fold here. You know, you can see he rushed, writes it on his midsole. Trust God, and you know, he just puts it in. He's a great kid. He just comes back from every single setback. And he's back here, controlling things for the Red Devils on the ball now. Did he make those two, Logan? I didn't see it. I know he missed the last one. Oh, uh, he made the first one. Made the first one. Thank you. So that's 10 for Sharif. Logan does something finally here. <laughs> it was Schwartz. Schwartz will go now. Love to see this. Don't want to see him give up responsibility every time. You know. He can do that, Logan. Just don't see him do it a lot, you know. The momentum on offense in this quarter for the Devils has been much better than the last quarter. Yep, certainly here. Now the lead is only five. It was once 11. But went on that 6-0 run there. Sharif faked the three as Bermudez. He'll do likewise. It's always so active when they catch these balls. He'll catch these passes. So threatening Sampson with the screen. He'll spin. Or roll, I should say, excuse me. Pearson. Sampson wants it there, you can see. It's a good position on Shirk. Bermuda spins, who's doing well with that spin tonight. Big rebound from Sampson. And right now it's Shirk here, it's kind of getting out. Rebound here at the moment, gets that rebound. And a turnover there, Cameron Diogene with the travel. It's something, of course, still a young player, still learning, but. Sampson the, on the offensive glass has dominated things for Irvington. There's Pearson. Leads this team in scoring. I haven't seen him score too much though. Tonight had that three late in the first quarter. Here's Sampson. He'll pull the mid-range. Ooh, and that's way off for him there. And rebounded by Shirk. Now here's Diogene.
Landy. Schwartz, good back door for D.O.G. Now he's doubled there, loses it, and will keep it with his team now. He's deflected out of play. 20-25, still the score here. 2.30 to go in this half. It's been low scoring KG as we would expect from a state game, of course, Logan. I mean, maybe sometimes in the early rounds it can get a bit ugly, but here, of course, it's always going to be tight. Diogene. That's why you can't read into the seating too much. We knew this Irvington team was going to be athletic and tough, and they've proven to be so there. Rebound there. It's Corey Pearson, number 13 in there. And there's Jaden Pearson. Now Sampson will get the entry pass. Kind of brought him a bit wide. Here's Jaden Pearson again. Sharif will go to work. Oh, tough crossover on Mars. He'll pull the mid-range. No good that time. But that separation was something, huh, Logan? Definitely was, Tyler. Diogene cut off the Hayden Landy rebound. Shirk. Cameron Diogene again. Here's Landy all alone. He'll pull it again. Why not? Well, that time just off the back iron there. And it's Pearson the other way. He'll go. We'll put it up. And they call the charge. Great call by the ref there. Yep, Diogene set his feet, took it well there. As it was the knee of Corey Pearson that hit him there. So good work there from Cameron Diogene. Doing it on both ends here. Had to make up for that turnover. And he did so very well there. And will be on it again. Shirk. We've almost lost it there. It's Cameron Diogene. Ooh, they want a backcourt there. Still the lead is five. Landy. Did well, gets his rebound, put it back up, and now that time gets the roll there for Hayden Landy. He was pressed very hard, and he's got five now. He can, has that ability to score the ball, Logan. We've seen him do it in some really good performances in his last two years. See if he can have another one. He's got five already. Here's Pearson. He'll go strong. Lost it. Bermudez will keep it, though. He'll try to put one up, and he does so. Ooh, it's tipped very high. And we'll go with Irvington there. It's been a bit of a drought here for Irvington in the last four or five minutes or so. And scored a bucket except for that free throw. And now the lead only three, so it's been a very productive quarter for the Red Devils. Yeah, Central's really locked up their defense. Yep, had to really needed to do that with the zone there. It was coming to be a bit too Swiss cheese-esque with too many holes, I'll say, Logan. That's one way to describe it, Tyler. <laughs> Here's Sharif. But the defense has been good of late, though. Sharif's been certainly a thorn in that side. It's Corey Pearson for Jaden Pearson. Back for Sharif. There's Pearson again. And he'll pull the three there. Pearson from way out, and he'll get that one to go. Corey Pearson not shy of shooting. Has 7.33 points, 7.39 points per game off the bench for the Servington roster here. And he's been a just, and when you can do that off the bench, when you can have bring someone in that can score the ball consistently, it's really something you just can't, it's just so valuable. The Red Devils certainly don't have it there. Schwartz for a three. That one's off, only two points for him after he had 22 in the first half against Pingree, only two in this half. But that's what we said there, Logan, you know. Have someone like Corey Pierce to come off the bench, hit that long ball, be a threat to the Red Devils, make them extend out their zone. It's going to be a problem, but it's been Irvington that's doing most of the work inside here and gives them the 28-22 lead here at the end of the first half. Stay tuned for second half action here live on HGTV. Tyler Rodriguez here for HGTV live at halftime for the 100 and Central First Irvington State playoff game. Joined here with Matthew Schwartz. Recently just hit the 1,000-point milestone on Monday against Pingree. What was the emotions going through your mind when you made that bucket to, to make it 1,000? must have been just, just can't even describe it. Honestly. Yeah, I mean, the best way to describe it for me was a bunch of nerves, but also a bunch of excitement because it's kind of what I've been, you know, looking forward to for, for the past three years, and it's been my, uh, my dream to get there ever since I was a little kid looking up at the banner watching the games here. So it's just really something special. 
And what does it mean for you to have your family and friends there on the senior night? So many people giving you support, whether it was on the court or after, you know, on the socials and all that stuff. What did that mean for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I'd be nowhere without them. You know, all, all the coaches, the players, my friends, family, they're always there to support me ever since I was a little kid. And uh, I also I have a grace for them, and I'm really thankful for them. And of all the 1,000 points, is there one particular bucket that sticks out to you that you really remember? Because I remember score, you scored some great ones when I first started in your game sophomore year. You got some nice ones against Gill, had the buzzer beater. Is there anything that sticks out for you? I, mean, I know this was originally, but it would probably have to be the buzzer beater. It's kind of it's kind of like, yeah, like it was straight out of the movie, and it felt felt really good. So now into the postseason for you guys, what is the mindset? I mean, so kind of quick, the turnaround from hitting the 1,000 points and then Really can't kind of bask in the glory too much because you have this big game coming up now against Irvington. Yeah, I mean we're just we're just locked in for the state game. We've had a, a few a few rough games and we're trying to uh, get 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 back up and get a win at home. And now, what does this journey mean to you? Last three years you've been here, kind of coming up from the sixth man and to to the starter role now to the guy here. What does that mean for you? What are, what are you gonna look back with fond memories here? Yeah, I mean it's super special. I'm um, trying to, you know, I was I was part of this whole rebuild program, and to to be where we are now, uh, looking back from when I was a sophomore, uh, it's really great that that I was a part of this, and, and uh, it felt good to to see our progression throughout the three years. You now you joined this team when you were a sophomore. You look now on this younger generation. Some young sophomores on the squad have some talented juniors. Shirk, Cameron Diogene started a lot. It's been kind of problems with players kind of dropping out. But do you think that this group can continue to be successful and build on all your hard work over these last three years? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, all the seniors have kind of uh, implanted like our culture with them. And I think that they're going to be locked in and spread it with uh, the, the younger generation. Matt, thank you and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. So back now here, live from the field house here on HGTV for a second half action from the Section 2 Group 4 first round here of the NJSIA tournament here. Tyler Rodriguez alongside Logan Williams. And for those of you just tuning in here, the Red Devils struggled, went down six early, then was able to claw it back and went down to as many as 11 before fighting their way all the, all the way back to as close as a lead of just three for the Irvington Blue Knights. But... Right now, the lead stands at six for the Red Devil, or for the Blue De Blue Knights, excuse me, all oh, the red and blue confusing <laughs> me. Logan, interested to get your thoughts on that first half. I mean, honestly, the first quarter was, uh, it was definitely rough for the Red Devils, but they definitely took it back here in the second quarter, and I think they played better than the Blue Devils in the second quarter. Blue Knights, Logan. I, yeah. <laughs> you screwed me up. Yeah, but it was definitely a first quarter to forget for the Red Devils, and they've done so, and they're now Back here, ready. Looks like better than ever here for this second half. Don't want to speak too soon. They usually struggle in the third quarter, and historically, looks like they're doing that so far here as Pearson puts it through for his fifth point of the night there, and it's the defense that's been tough. And we were talking, Logan, interested sub patterns from Coach DeFazio in that first half. Some interesting decisions here from, from him with bringing in Landon Marsh, Alec Grimbaum kind of summoned them in and out, trying to find who was looked good. Didn't want to go to Ethan Diogene or, or to Squire or anyone like that, sticking with these main seven as he's done all, plenty for the large part of the year. But we were saying well, maybe they would benefit from having someone like Diogene out there, another ball handler to help them with this really intense Irvington pressure. Matthew Mona filling up more cups. Sharif struggled so far from the line tonight to one for three. And splits that pair that time. He's got 11. But that's what we were saying, Logan, with the, the ball handling situation. I wonder if you want to add in on that. Uh, well, yeah. I say uh, 
everything you said about it is pretty much right. <laughs> but Cameron Diogene's been, been pretty well against the pressure here. Does have the three turnovers, but I mean, it's going to come, obviously, with that. Or four, rather, excuse me, after the last one. Here's Mars, and you're saying they got to get Mars going. Logan, he's one of the best shooters, or is the best shooter on this team. I would say so. Let's see if Coach Defazio has got something up his locker for him. He's directing traffic there. Here's Diogene. Oh, he'll spin. Marsh goes inside. Tough move from him, and that's something he's tried to develop there. Getting the ball down on the floor. Here's a sophomore, Bermudez. And that time, just unlucky there for Marsh. It was a tough contested layup. Here's Jaden Bermudez. Now running the point here. Back for Sharif Bermudez. And now it'll be Pierce in the takeover. He's been so calm under, under pressure here. As the Red Devils usually come out in some intense pressure, but today they've been kind of laxed a bit here in terms of their full court press there. And another second chance opportunity for the Blue Knights. They've got so many of those here. They can really dominate the offensive glass. That's been just, they've won the hustle plays, and that's just something that you can't have if you're Coach Lafazio and the Red Devils there. Sampson, he'll put it up. Another wild effort. He'll want a foul there. Won't get it. And that one too far there. Diogene there, his fifth turnover there, trying to find Landon March. So he's playing so good at one moment, but just struggled here at the start of the third quarter. It was a good effort by Landon, though. Definitely almost got that ball. Oh, did he, Logan? I, I'd say so. Taylor now back in after he came out for Corey Pearson, who had the three, sorry, excuse me. And that one, Taylor gets that one to go there. He's got eight now. Here's Landy. Shirk. He'll pull the tray. That one will be off there. And it's an easy rebound for Pearson. And a, a rare timeout here for Elias Brantley, the head coach for Irvington Blue Knights. He normally doesn't stop things, just lets things go, go, go. And this time I want to talk things over here, but. They brought in Taylor after they brought in Corey Pearson with that deep three, and Taylor has just been another consistent score for them this whole year. The sophomore, 11.3 points per game. He's got eight. Sharif, only 5.6 normally, but he's got 11 tonight as well. So just so many options for the Red, for the Blue Knights, excuse me, and for the Red Devils, their main guy, Matthew Schwartz, only four. Cameron Diogene has tried to pick up the slack. He's got seven, and Shirk has six, but... Like you said, having gotten Landon Marsh zero for him, hitting Landy five is a, not what we expected, but certainly they'll take it there. But they've got to try to get something going, either for Marsh or for Schwartz, Logan, because, I mean, those two can change the game with the ability to shoot the three ball. You know, you make two, you're right back in it. You make three, now you're looking good. You know, make four or five, and you're in the lead, you know. So it's just such an, two electric X factors they have on this roster. There's Pearson. Bermudez. It's Taylor moving. Jaden Pearson wants it. He'll get it. It's Taylor. Tough crossover that time. It'll be a tough bucket if that one went through. And again, they just win every off board here. That's another rebound there. Inside, Bermudez puts it off offhand. Schwartz with the rebound that time. And it's Jordan Ogbeweli now in for the Blue Knights. Guarding Weston Shirk. Here's Diogene Schwartz. Hopefully he'll get this one to go. And no good that time. And Schwartz tried to take the charge there. Mm, Logan, what do you think? I, I don't thought, know, Tyler. I thought he maybe leaned maybe with the hip or moved slightly. But I don't know. They looked pretty set there. It was, it was a good effort there from, I think it was Sharif who tried to just evade him there. They call it on the floor, though. Schwartz's first foul. And there's Pearson. Taylor is all alone. And they'll invite him to shoot it. Why not? But well, he gets the rebound, but pushed off. And with that, Samson will check back in for him. 
And we were talking Brad Armando, so impressed by the athleticism and the frame of Samson, saying he's a big kid, and then stopped and said, well, actually, he's a really like a, more of a grown man. <laughs> and Most some, of the players. Yeah, and they've had some games like that, certainly in the last three where they've played. It's been men against boys, and the Red Devils have unfortunately been the boys in most of, the, most of these scenarios, but they got to play with the heart of a man, the heart of a lion, Logan. Yeah, there are boys. And try to come out on top here, and they've shown good fight. Got to credit them with that. Here's Landy, and good defense from Sampson there. And, you know, the Blue Knights came here to play with loads of energy, you know. And the Red Devils really got to match it. And it's just very simple, you know. Simplest at its court. The Blue Knights won more hustle plays. They played harder here, and that's probably why they're ahead. Here's Schwartz. Would have been crazy if it went in and gets the put back to go. Taylor. Let's see what the call is there. Bermudez will throw that one long for Sharif. Guarded right by Diogene. Oh, this has that hesitation crossover so well. Oh, that shot was a bit wild, but the bit before it was good. There's Diogene with the rear man here. Schwartz, Bermudez, and one for Matthew Schwartz there in the Red Devils. Tyler, I'll tell you what hasn't disappointed me tonight, the energy from the crowd. And a rare good point from Logan there. Thank you, Tyler. <laughs> I appreciate you giving me uh, my props. So Schwartz hasn't shot the ball well, but he's always going to run the floor. He's always going to make cuts to the basket and try to get, you know, the full, the, the hustle buckets there. And he gets one there and then able to get a line and turn it into three. So he's got calm nine here. And you can say calm because he hasn't really played well, but still has nine. And he just often does that. He just always gives you points. And that's just something that is so invaluable for this team. There's Marsh. Oh, turnover landing Marsh. And the Knights the other way. And Taylor will say please and thank you there as he's got 10. And Marsh really struggled here today with the two turnovers. He just hasn't looked too comfortable on it. And that is no need to pick up the dribble there. Dribbles himself right into the corner. And will be Grimbaum again here. I really just think this is a great game for Ethan Diogene, but Fazio to have to see something else, Logan. No, no, don't know what you think about that. Um, I mean, it's hard to tell, Tyler. <laughs> A lot more noise from the crowd here. Well, this is the uh, opposing team's cheerleaders out there, the Blue Knights. They're a very talented cheerleading squad, we'll say. And I certainly were distracting me and you with all the noise they were making. Why don't our cheerleaders do that? They don't go out on the court. Um, I don't know. They do sometimes, but certainly not like this. Yeah. It's like, come on. Don't be greedy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by don't be greedy? I mean, our cheerleaders take up what? Like, not even a quarter of the court? They're just, like, up in the middle of it. So you're saying our cheerleaders need to do more? I'm saying our cheerleaders know, like, their place. And they're saying they should fight them off the middle of the court. Why are they clapping? They're clapping for their enemy team. Did you see that? If I was a cheerleader, I wouldn't clap for that, personally. They're showing, excuse me, they're showing props, Logan. I mean, if that's your enemy team, you don't really want to be showing them Why they that? This is the first ever meeting between these two teams. They're not enemies. But they're opposite teams of cheerleading. Oh, this is not competition, Logan. This is just for for support but I see your point though certainly you're mad that the opposing team gets to go on center court and all those cheerleaders don't there you think they'd be more territorial is that what you're trying to say Logan? yes that is what I'm trying to say Tyler was it so difficult for you to say that I'm bad at articulating things Tyler you know this and you get paid to talk though <laughs> it's a cruel world <laughs> cruel for our listeners that's for sure <laughs> See the fans getting very rowdy, as Logan said. So rowdy, Mr. Spencer having to give a talk to them. 
And a miss there and a Hayden Landy rebound. Here's Cameron Diogene now for the Red Devils. The lead is six. Same as it was at the start of this quarter, but you can see the Red Devils starting to creep back into it, but their mistakes, Logan, just proving to be costly, though. Good dribbling work from Diogene. Handles the ball very comfortably. Ooh, Landy hits the deck. There's Grimbaum. He'll put it up. Ooh, no good there, but it's Landy who catches it. Schwartz will shoot it over. He'll fall, won't get the, the foul there. It's a really good weak side rebound from Grimbaum, and he'll draw the foul on Keon Sampson there. So good work there from Grimbaum, not, you know, getting down to the air ball, the one shot. Just getting back in position, rebounds it, and puts it up, and now gets a great opportunity to get some points on the board, and, you know, Brad, me and him are talking the same. You know, we haven't seen maybe the best play from him, but he does have potential, though. You know, can be a very talented player for this team going forward and next year as well for them. And gets the two free throws there. And here is the sophomore Bermudez. And there you go, Molly, right in my line of vision. There's a three in the corner. <laughs> Landy. Grimbaum, back for Landy. Shirk, oh, Samson got a bit too tight there. And they'll call the foul on the floor. And with that, they'll have to bring on Ogbewele there, Jordan, Jordan Ogbewele for Keon Sampson as he picks up a couple of fouls there, so gonna have to go with the backup there. And, you know, talk about backups, uh, Shirk for the Red, that was the main center to do the backups, Mullen has said Brooks Longo, but it's been Shirk really the whole year for this Red Devils team, and he's done pretty well. But that's something the Red Devils have always had, they've always had two, three options. Last year, Wilhelm and Shirk, the year before, they've had Hansen there, as well as Wilhelm, so they had always options, but Fazio just always likes to pick one, it seems. Inbound. Shorts again, all alone, and he's just struggled shooting the ball tonight, but that time, he'll get the foul there, and throws it on Jaden Pier Pearson, and Schwartz will go to the line there, chance to shoot three. And this, Logan, if you're often in a shooting slump, which by short, shorts of standards is very much in one, one way to get it back is, of course, go to the line and establish your confidence there. Certainly, Tyler. I wouldn't really know, because I don't get in slumps like you, but. Well, in order to get into a slump, you have to take a shot first. So Corey Pearson, Checks back in for the first time after hitting the three in at the end of the first quarter. Oh, excuse me, at the end of the yeah, was it was end of the first quarter, I believe. Or maybe it was the second, but regardless, he checks back in. The sharpshooter, the sophomore, or the senior, excuse me, Corey Pearson. Oh, Sharif travels. And now look at that, Logan, the lead, only one. This is the closest he's been since the beginning of the game, since before the first shot. That was when they were tied. That's what I'm saying. That was Red Devils chance for them to get their first lead of the night here, as Logan, I think, was attempting to say. Here's Diogene. Landy will be all alone again. <laughs> you can see the crowd urging him to shoot. Diogene. It might look like there'll be a bit of a wild take, but sometimes that's what you need to do. Just draw the foul, get yourself to the line. And he does that there. Cameron Diogene has seven points. 
And chance to get nine here, and like we said, get the Red Devils the lead for the first time. Tyler, I think it's a little suspicious that the cheerleaders decide to do their chance where they stomp on the bleachers constantly when we're taking foul shots. How is that suspicious? I don't know. Maybe it just seems like they're trying to throw our shooters off. I think they're definitely trying to throw the shooters off, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the whole goal. We got a tie game now. And it's been tied for the first time since it was 0-0. Bermudez will put it up. Had a lot of time, but puts it up early there. And back in front, Bermudez now has four. And it's heaved up there. And Grimbaum won at the foul, so Bermudez... Gets a bucket to go to just make sure the Blue Knights still lead through three quarters up two. What oh, good op opposition cheerleaders cheering for them there, Logan. Yeah, I don't know about that, Tyler. In a sense, Spencer probably made sure that the Red Devils didn't boo them. Our cheerleaders don't need to do all that. We're just good enough. And now, Logan, with that, we will send it down to Brad Romano, who's courtside for us, and get his opinion. It's been a great game. It's been back and forth between Irvington and Central. In that first half, it looked like Irvington had this game all locked, but Central has came back in with the help of the X Factor of this team, like Coach Tafazio says, Matthew Schwartz. You can see Coach Tafazio trying to hype his guys up and get them right back in this, and he's done a good job at that. Schwartz has done a great job on both sides of the ball, defensively and offensively. He's making great shots and doing a great job of getting to the rim. Cameron Dijon also having a very good game tonight, especially on the offensive side. Central is right in this. It's do or die, win or lose. Lose the season's over when they move on. Back to you, Tyler. Yep, so Brad, what he's saying there. Thank you, Brad. Definitely very correct. You know, we talked, well, I talked, Logan listened about how Schwartz and Marsh are certainly with the ability that they have to shoot the ball can change the game at any moment for them. And they've done that here. Certainly Schwartz hasn't made the three, but he's gone inside, ran the floor there. And if he starts shooting the rock well, Logan, it's going to be lights out here for the Irvington Blue Knights. But. Diogene had a bit of a rough third quarter. See if he can get that going to his form in that first half. Yeah, honestly, Tyler, if you compare the first quarter to the third quarter, it's like night and day. Devils just played so much better and so much more aggressive. Yep, certainly in this. Probably the second quarter was their best there. They had a rough start to that, to that second. They had a rough start to that third quarter, I should say, where they just conceded a couple of... of early layups there against the Blue Knights. But they were able to respond well. You know, that's, that's how the old saying goes, Logan. It's not about how you start, but how you finish. I agree, Tyler. And this will be the finish to this game in this last eight minutes here with Jaden Pearson bringing it up and giving it to Bermudez, who has four to score in the last bucket there for the Blue Knights. And gives it to Sharif. Here's Bermudez. And a tough pump fake and jab from him. Pearson in the corner is a talented shooter. That time it was short. And you see Fazer, like Brad is trying to hype his guys up, tell them they need a play. Like everything's on the line, Logan, and because it is here. Schwartz for Landy. Diogene with a head of steam. Little head fake, we'll pull it out now. Goes through the legs to his left, spins. And great help defense by Ogobuele there. And it wasn't the found Ogobuele, it was on, who's that? It's on Sharif there on Hayden Landy. crowd is still bringing the energy here even in the fourth quarter they haven't let up a little bit in fact oh. it seems like they've got more energy as the game's gone on yeah it's certainly gone better and Landry gets the first one so Samson back in for Ogbewele and 
Second one is good, so all knotted up at 37 here, Logan. There's Pearson, goes left. In the corner, Sharif. Pearson again, Bermudez. Looks like they got Taylor Q up to come in here is Bermudez. Pearson, it's Corey Pearson that is I should say. Bermudez gets a screen from Sampson, goes to his left. Good pass, Sampson, a strong take, and the foul. Sampson for a six point on the night and it all been tough ones, Logan. Taylor to check in for Corey Pearson here. So big free throw coming up here for Sampson to give his team the three point advantage. And no good off the back of the iron. Shirk with the rebound. Here's Diogene. The big head of steam. Euro puts it up and gets the foul. And that's what you love to see. Take it, head of steam, goes down. And you can see Coach Brantley is certainly a very calming presence there for him to tell him this player, yeah, he shuffled a little bit, have to stay set. And Cameron Diogene, another chance to go to the line. He's one or two for three, excuse me. Eight points. And third personal on Bermudez. Oh, and they call him on the floor, rather, excuse me. Let's see if they run something for Schwartz here, they do. It's a good defense though from Pearson. Schwartz goes, there's Landy catching, shoots. It's good for Landy. Two threes for him tonight. The Devils are winning for the first time in the game. They're, well, second time actually, Logan. Or is it? Yep, it is a second. They let very briefly. Well, maybe the first, actually. Now you got me confused. I Logan. think it is the first. And it's a big way to do it. Ooh. And they won't be leading for long there. Oh, never mind. We've seen that reverse a couple of times. And the Irvington bench, not happy there. Logan, interesting to get your take. I think it was a great call. And the refs are doing a great job. Cameron Diogene. On the back, through the legs. It's been a great night tonight, Diogene. Sharif has played him pretty well too. Just has to fight through screens. Bermudez there, try to contest. And it's a tough bucket there from Diogene, but gets it to go. He's got 10 and gets a pump of the air from Brat to the left of us there. Watching the game, I'm sure all you are at home there. On the edge of your seats here is Bermudez. There's Pearson, you see what the Blue Knights have to do here. Losing for the first time tonight, as Logan said. Corner, Sharif. That would tie it up. And it's a jump ball. And stays with the Blue Knights here. There's Sampson. Taylor, talented sophomore, to the other talented sophomore, Bermudez, screen from Sampson, inside, gives it there, there's a three from Pearson, no good, rebound Taylor, he'll put it up, gets the roll for Jasmine Taylor there, and he's got 12, Diogene, Schwartz gets a screen from Shirk, spins, goes inside. Oh, that's yeah, definitely a charge there. 
That I think there was no debate, but Coach DeVazio is debating something. Logan. Yes, Tyler? What do you think about that call? Uh, I agree with the ref. Definitely looked like a charge to me. So Taylor with 12. Gives up the responsibility for Pearson to bring this one up. There's Bermudez. Goes to his right. Gets inside. Puts it up. No good. Shirk spins. And goes the other way here. So here's Diogene again. Again, the mid-range from Diogene off the roll, no good. And it's a big rebound there for Taylor. He'll push it ahead. Big bucket and, and one there. That time, no doubt there. And it was Jaden Pearson running the floor there and gets a chance for the three-point play. And they're obviously, Logan, as we said, they're going to be a dangerous team in transition. So athletic the way they run the floor. We're just seeing them in the layup lines and obviously quick catching the ball actively. Athletic, tall, can jump. Certainly, Tyler. But are they as dangerous as Central? Well, certainly on the break. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Cameron Diogene. Here's Schwartz. Goes to his left, his favorite hand. It's a foul there, looks like on Bermudez maybe. If it is, that's his fourth. Here's Grimbaum. Oh, got pressed very quickly. Wow. There's Diogene. Ooh. Oh, another turnover. Oh. I don't even know what that was. Was Tyler? a turnover on Diogene there, Logan? It was. That'll be a six there. So Blue Knights will inbound it up one here. They're going to probably look for a good look here, try to get a bucket. Don't need to rush anything. Up one, obviously, late on. Here's Sharif. Bermudez, I believe he's got four fouls now. He's got to play smart. Well, that's a good, that's a, just a resourceful layup there for Bermudez, who's got six, normally I'm just 7.26 per game. And here's Cameron Diogene. Goes to the left, back doors Grimbaum, and that one's good. So seven assists for Cameron Diogene to go along with the 10 points. Does have the six turnovers, but if they win, no one will remember those. And again, it's just the Blue Knights just been able to have little plays like this that kind of just stop the momentum of the Red Devils. And that time it's just a take and get themselves to the line there for Jaden Pearson. He was 0 for 1 from the line tonight. And at this stage, Logan, as you know, these free throws are huge here. Yeah, they can make or break the game at this point, Tyler. And Pearson gives his team a two-point lead here. A very small cushion. They would love this one, too. And they'll get it to go. So Pearson's got nine now. The lead is three. Here's Shirk. Landy. Diogene. It's a Landy, it looks like he went up with the, the elbows a little bit there. Landy, but the refs don't say anything. I think the Irvington bench wanted it. Landy will pull it again. And a big missed rebound. You know what happened there? Sampson went up, so did Pearson, and so did Jasmine Taylor, and they all got in each other's way there. And Grimbaum almost just had it fall right into his hands there as Diogene will inbound it for Landy. They try to go back door and they do so, but not too effectively. Schwartz keeps it alive. And Schwartz 
or Shirk, excuse me, gets it to go. So the Red Devils make something out of nothing, and oh, on the other end, it's an and one play for Jasmine Taylor. He's had a big night tonight for the sophomore, 14 points. And now Cameron Diozini probably wants a conversation, more of a being talked at by Coach DeFazio there. And if they make this one, they're going to go up four here, 145 would be huge for Jasmine Taylor and the Irvington Blue Knights. And he gets it to go. So 15 now for Taylor Logan. What do the Red Devils have to do to get back into this one and take the advantage down four late? I think they need to lock up their defense like they did at the beginning of this quarter and during most of the second quarter. And they just need to stay coordinated on offense, move the ball around. You know, maybe get like some shooters in there. I'm not saying Landon Marsh, but maybe Landon Marsh. We haven't seen him at all actually in that quarter, like you said, Logan. He's the best shooter on the team, and I think the Devils may be uh, missing him right I think that's now. a good shout. It's a, it certainly seems like a, a good game for him at the moment here. Get a shooter on the court when the game's tight in transition, have him post up in the corner, and probably will find him open with at least two, three good looks. You know, and yeah. You probably bet your money he'll make that one there. I mean, maybe just, things get really tight there. Need another ball handler. I do have Ethan Diogene there. That can help calm things down for them, along with his brother Cam, who's done very well. Yeah, I mean, even just like one three here will change the entire tide of the game. Two threes, forget about it. Two threes will put them up by two. So this is it, final 145 to go here. And could be the final 145 of the season for the Red Devils if they're not careful here. They need to score four, they need to do so. In relatively quick fashion here is Diogene. Every possession counts now. Diogene again goes to that mid-range. Oh, again, he's just unlucky there. Just one for three now on those mid-range jumpers. And Bermudez will be in no hurry. And will advance it for Pearson. The Red Devils have no fouls to give now. Bermudez. Pump fakes. It goes right, crosses over. Pulls it back out again. Now finds Pearson. A minute now to play. Here's Bermudez inside. We'll get the foul. Scrimbaum with the foul there. And as I said, the new rule... Once you get to the five, the six, we'll shoot two. So that's six fouls now, we'll shoot two, as they were already at five there. So a big free throws here for Bermudez. And that looks off, and it is. This is when the pressure kicks in here, Logan, up late. And here you go, Landon Marsh. They need a prayer now. And Landy's had a good shift, has a great career too, if it's the last we'll see of him. So Bermudez will split the pair to put them up by five. So have a bit of some breathing room, but not too much though. Red Devils need to score, need to do so quickly. Can't waste too much time here. Steve Jean will try to go in and out. Will stop and go, gets a screen. Look for Marsh, they'll need to. Or Schwartz, someone here. Here's Shirk inside. A quick layup will do uh, nicely. And then one will do very well. Big bucket there for Weston Shirk, Logan. And now Landy will check back in quickly for Marsh there. Shirk 
Shirker really needs to make this here. If he can do that, a three would give the Red Devils the lead. And he gets it to go, no problem. So Shirk now with 11. So Irvington will look to just advance the ball, not turn it over, maybe foul. That's a good work, draw foul, good work from Pearson there. Taylor, yep, that's a foul there. So now these become very crucial here. Again, they'll need these two to make sure they stay in the lead and just live to fight another day here. If not, really putting up questions into fate here as Marsh now will check back in. This time for Cameron Diogene. Got a great day today, Cameron Diogene. But it looks unhappy is how it's ended for him here. So here we go, Taylor with 15 points tonight. The first one is no good. That miss is really Bad miss with his there. head. Bit misses left there. And they'll bring in Ethan Diogene here. And this is again when we talk about an interesting sub pattern. They're interesting to bring it in the last 32.9, but that's what they do. This is huge here for Taylor. And misses it. Oh, but they get the rebound and throw it off. Oh, and it stays with the Blue Knights. And that's just unlucky there. Logan the bounce didn't go through, but Shirk should have been closing out. You think a bit better there, but couldn't just. Box out his man there. It's a huge rebound. And now Ethan Diogene will have to come back in quickly. He has obviously lots of fouls to give just in Bermudez. And Grimbaum will foul him. So Bermudez now will have the golden opportunity really now to give them some breathing room, put them up four. Gets that. Big free throw here for Bermudez and gets that one to go. Jaden Bermudez now has nine. Grimbaum will have to go quickly. Oh, Marsh in the corner. Thought I was going to have to catch that one. Marsh puts it up. No good. Grimbaum gets the rebound. Gets it to go. And DeFazio, wow. That was something there to call the timeout. I think Central might need a miracle here. Oh, well, seen crazier things happen for sure, but Grimbaum acknowledging his fault there. If he just passed that one a bit better to Marsh in kind of his pocket where his hands were, probably would have made that because he passed it low kind of threw off the rhythm of Marsh got closed down quicker but they still get the bucket and so that's Grimbaum's sixth point of the night and now this really comes down to it, Logan 51-53 they'll inbound it quickly try to get a steal within two seconds if you can't do so have to foul immediately and then just hope they miss two if they make one still you know a three would tie it and, going and you still would have about eight eight seconds to do so, assuming you can foul within three seconds. Mm. So if they can foul within three seconds, a little deep, ten on the clock for them to get the ball back, and they could take a good shot and potentially win or tie the game. Yeah. Whatever or, happens here, it's going to be tight. Or ideally get the steal early, you know. To get early steal, that really would help things out. But... Did their cheerleaders do any flips? I think our cheerleaders are the only ones that do flips. Yeah, they And are. I think that's more impressive than doing little dances. You think so, you me. <laughs> Can you I mean, do a flip? I can't do a flip, but I can do a little dance. Yeah, I've seen your gritty. So a foul before anything even happens. Not sure what happened there. I'm not sure what happens either there, but. Huh? Was there maybe a tech? They called a foul on Ethan Diaz. You're not sure what he did. 
I don't think anyone knows what he did. But honestly, it kind of helps him out because they foul before any time goes off the clock. So they still have loads of time. It all comes down to Pearson knocking down these free throws. And he does that on the first one and gets him his 10th point of the night. And he knocks down the second, which is huge. So the Red Devils have to go quickly down for They need a quick bucket. Here's Ethan Diogene. Ooh, the ref falls. Shirk with three. Grimbaum with the rebound. Just puts it up. No good. Tries to get it again. Final two. One second to go. Marsh will chuck it up. And it won't matter as Irvington upsets the Red Devils here and ends this season for 100 Central as they fall 51-55 to the Irvington Blue Knights here and what was a season that was not all doom and gloom but what you think could have been so much more just unlucky for the Red Devils at the end they fought until the very end and just couldn't make it count there so that'll do it for us here on HGTV but the sectional action continues with hockey away tomorrow we will be there against Manalapin stay tuned for that coming up tomorrow thank you to Logan for joining me tonight I'm Tyler Rodriguez, and have a great night.